Chris, it's uh, really great to have you uh, part of this presentation with us today. Uh, kind of my first question this morning is really, pre-planning has been a very important part of the fire service in the past. Why is that, and where do you see pre-planning going in the future? Well, that's a good question. I mean, pre-planning really in its earliest applications were present in a variety of different forms from the fire underwriting and mapping uh, and building information uh, days back in the late 1800s and really expanding into the early 1900s. The development of those uh, documents uh, in the form of mapping really became the first uh, basis for pre-fire planning. And as recommended practices, as the development of codes uh, really started expanding in the 60s, 70s, and certainly really took root in the 1980s, that really became the formatting and the expectations that both the fire emergency services started recognizing the value for pre-fire planning. The codes and the current trends that really establish the criteria uh, really have become institutionalized. We, we, we require, demand, and, and need that kind of information primarily based upon the increasing complexities of our built environment. Our buildings and the related kinds of conditions that we find ourselves in need of pre-fire planning really requires documentation and information in whatever type of a formatting uh, would be available. But again, the complexity of both incidences, the scenarios and operations, uh, the multiple discipline applications, all of these really have required us to uh, evolve and to create these types of documents and really to format them in the, in the current trends that we're going into. You know, we talk a lot about interoperability and radio communications. How does interoperability really impact our pre-planning and data today? Well, pre-fire planning historically has been both functional and discipline uh, determinant, both in terms of uh, agencies having their own specific uh, types of formatting and templates, uh, the kind of information and intel. What we ended up seeing was quite a bit of uh, duplication of efforts and then also sometimes lacking of information because we don't have that type of application. I think when we take a look at uh, the cross-disciplinary applications currently, uh, we're seeing the diminished uh, duplication and omissions. A lot of the best practices that were instituted uh, in the 1990s all the way up into the 2000 era, which again, as a result of both regional and national uh, events, started recognizing the need for what we call interoperability, having consistencies, and that's allowed for a greater degree of efficiency, timeliness of intel and information and that cross-disciplinary sharing. So interoperability really has now become an institutionalized element both in our public safety realms and really has increased uh, the information the potential for various types of threats and events so we have an expanding uh, area of consistency in the ever expanding uh, risk area that all of our uh, associated organizations and cross disciplinary conditions so a lot of good stuff regarding inter uh, interoperability and the institutionalization of that across all of our disciplines and organizations. Great, I uh, really appreciate that insight. Yeah, you're welcome. I mean, again, you know, we take a look at what's been occurring. Uh, it's all been incremental. When we take a look at the last 20 to 30 years, and especially in the last 20 years of the 2000s, I think we're finally recognizing the need for that cross-disciplinary application, the interoperability, the cross-sharing uh, across all organizations. So. Instead of having the siloed applications and conditions, everyone is sharing really for the benefit of all organizations across the board. You know, Chris, with the evolution of technology, things like LiDAR, or the new iPhone and iPad that's getting ready to come out that may have LiDAR actually built into it as a capability, uh, do you see capabilities like this impacting how we leverage uh, our technology in the field with first responders? Oh, there's no question. I think the Technological uh, advancements uh, are gonna provide uh, a tremendous degree of uh, increased capabilities and ac accessibility. The biggest thing that we're looking at is really the field accessibility of that data in uh, formats and even in the hardware. So when we take a look at equipment, hardware, software, the applications, they're really going to allow for an unprecedented level of access to both uh, the Intel, the data, that's really going to enhance both incident and event uh, management across all the multiple uh, disciplines, areas, and operations. And really more importantly, it's going to allow for real-time and up-to-date intel and data. So we're going to have accessibility to a lot of information, 
uh, really in the palm of our hands or on our wrists or the hardware and the applications that are out there in a manner that, again, from a field application are, is going to give us a tremendous degree of latitude and capabilities un, unimaginable in the past and certainly something that's going to be well needed uh, in future applications and scenarios and incidents. You know, probably one of the most important thing though is going to be also the integration uh, so that this technology becomes part of our day-to-day -day operation. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's really going to be the key. I think we're going to see technology being seamless in that uh, as it's become already. I mean, we've seen the application of how we have institutionalized and really taken uh, applications such as the uh, various types of smartphones and utilize them to our advantage in a variety of different ways, both from the business operation, day-to-day -day private lives, as well as emergency management and those field applications. So the things that have been subtly being built into our systems over the last 15 years, we're gonna be going uh, full speed ahead in a, in a very quick manner. And these are gonna just drop in and will become very, very seamless, uh, and very intuitive relative to how we're going to be uh, utilizing them. So I think the learning curve is going to become more and more flat and then they will be just readily uh, and accessibly uh, implemented uh, uh, very quickly in the, in the future. Chris, well, hey, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your busy schedule to join us uh, this morning and uh, kind of reflect upon the history of the fire service and pre-planning and what's uh, in front of us. Well, you're certainly welcome, Tommy. I, again, I think we've got, uh, we're on the uh, cusp of some really great things coming uh, ahead of us on in the areas of uh, pre-planning and information and building intel. And the future is already here. It's knocking on our door. Just a lot of great things will be coming out here very, very shortly. They're really the biggest key is for us to uh, open up our, uh, our uh, potential for their usages and not be afraid of integrating this technology in our day-to-day -day operations.